Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a car muffler and how it works. Now a car muffler is used to reduce the amplitude of the sound that's coming from the exhaust pulse when the vehicle is running. Now there's three types of mufflers. There's the chambered muffler and then there's these types here which are turbo mufflers. Finally this one here is a straight through muffler. So we're going to cut these open to see what's inside and how it works. And these dual mufflers here are from a Subaru Outback. Interestingly enough this one looks like it's OEM because it's got Subaru and this one looks like aftermarket so it'd be interesting to see the difference between the two. For this I'm going to be trying out my brand new grinder that I got on Black Friday. Yeah, so this thing burns through blades a lot faster than my corded one. Here we are. Nice thick sheet of metal here. So taking a look at how this works here, you've got the input pipe, which is going to bring exhaust gases past the first chamber and then into the second chamber. Now there you're going to see some perforated holes where some exhaust gases are then going to escape into this first chamber over here. Now at the back of this pipe here, it's actually blocked completely with a glass pack fiber. Now these fibers are fine little strands which are going to vibrate at different frequencies and cause them to come out of phase. Now when the frequency of the sounds are out of phase, you get destructive interference. Now all of that sound and exhaust gases are going to be trapped into this first chamber over here where they're going to bounce off the front wall and rear wall over here and cause destructive interference with the sound and of course the distance between these walls here are specifically designed to cancel a certain wavelength finally the exhaust is then going to flow through these little holes over here on the bottom and the top side into the front chamber now the front chamber similarly to the rear chamber are going to be bouncing sound waves back and forth in between these two baffles once again causing destructive interference eventually the exhaust fluid is going to make its way down through this pipe over here and then exit out the tailpipe here at the back. It's actually a pretty unique system that doesn't really have any mechanical moving components that can fail. The only thing that'll happen is of course it'll rust out and that's just due to the water vapor interacting with the steel. A sound wave has a maximum and a minimum which defines its amplitude and then it's also got the wavelength which is from peak to peak which is defined by the speed of the sound divided by frequency. Now in an ideal scenario here you've got the wave that's moving along towards the right. When it bounces off the wall it's going to be 180 degrees out of phase which is this green one over here now if you add those two together you're going to have this graph over here where all the troughs and the peaks line up which means that if you add the amplitudes together they're going to cancel each other out and you essentially have no sound and it's muffled all right next up we got the aftermarket version of the same muffler There we go. We got a bit of a different layout inside here. Now looking at the aftermarket muffler, you see that its input gas is going to come in through the first chamber and then enter the second chamber through these perforations over here. So some of the fluid is going to end up in this middle chamber. Finally, the exhaust gases are going to exit out the back over here where you have this pinched pipe. Now this pipe is not completely locked up. Exhaust gases can still come through. However, there is no glass pack at the back here like there was on the OEM. Now exhaust gases from there and these perforations are then going to fill up this rear chamber over here where the wavelengths are then going to cancel each other out by moving between these two baffles. Now unlike the OEM, once this baffle is filled up, the exhaust gases are now going to go through this pipe back to the next chamber as opposed to the OEM which actually had holes in this baffle allowing exhaust gases to go through. Now this middle chamber allows for an additional noise cancellation because you've got yet another two baffles where sound from the input and the one on the counter pipe over here to once again cancel each other out. That exhaust gas is then going to travel over to the rear chamber. Finally in the rear chamber you'll see that this pipe is also pinched just like the front pipe over here. It's not completely locked off, so that's going to allow some exhaust gases to come from there and this perforation over here to fill up this rear chamber. The sound is once again going to bounce from the rear wall to this baffle over here, cancel each other out, and then it's going to go through this pipe over here out to the back. That pipe is then going to travel through these baffles all the way to the rear to exit the tailpipe. Now on paper this might be a better design, however it's going to significantly alter your vehicle's noise characteristics. It's also good that it has double wall here, however the build quality might not be the best because if you see there's a whole pile of rust inside of here that simply isn't there on the OEM even though this is a lot newer. So here's a good look between the aftermarket and OEM muffler. Now this one doesn't have any brand name stamped on the muffler jacket so I don't know which brand it is but it's interesting to see that there's actually more parts in the aftermarket one as opposed to the OEM. You'd think that the aftermarket would probably shortcut something. Now next up on the chopping block is the muffler from my 2011 Toyota Sienna. Now I did have a couple of pinholes on it so they decided to change it. Now this is made by Walker 4 Toyota. This is the OEM muffler. I'll tell you the aftermarket muffler that they put on there really makes the van sounds like it's struggling and already has another exhaust leak. If you're like me and you care about a nice smooth quiet ride, OEM is probably the best way to go for muffler replacements. Now this is supposed to be the inlet. I know it looks like it's haphazardly welded on by some backyard mechanic. It actually looks like they've patched this piece over here because that was supposed to be the inlet but in fact the outlet is on this side. 
There's these little spot welds here that I got pry back on. Alrighty. But just like the others, this is a double layer and it's spot welded in these locations to the bathroom. Now taking a look at this Toyota muffler, you'll see that this input here comes into this pipe here which has lots of perforations inside and that's going to fill up this entire rear section over here. Now it's important to know that these here are actually not really baffles, they're just there for structural support. They mostly have big holes in them anyway. Now the rear chamber is going to fill up with exhaust gases and of course the sound is going to start cancelling each other out as it moves between the rear plate and this middle baffle over here. Now the outlet pipe, which is this one running crossway over here going out this way, has a few little perforations in it itself so there is a chance that some of that exhaust gases can just take a short circuit and exit straight out the tailpipe. Now the first chamber is now filled with exhaust gases it's then going to make its way through these perforations here in the baffle itself to fill up the second chamber at the back here these are going to cause destructive interference as the sound waves battle between these two and this area fills up with exhaust gases. Now inside of the rear chamber here you can see we do have the exhaust pipe that's going to start from over here to collect that now muffled exhaust gas and send it down through that pipe over here that runs the length of the muffler out through the tailpipe. Now because these perforations are in line with everything else there is a chance that some sound waves can actually bounce off the back of the muffler make its way through here and then bounce off the front of the muffler for an interesting noise characteristic. Now when VTEC kicks in or in Toyota's case variable valve timing with intelligence this little spring-loaded trap door is going to open and it's got quite a strong spring for just the flow of exhaust and that's going to allow all that pressure from this side to vent over to this side over here and of course muffle things out but it is obviously going to change the noise characteristics because you now have a lot more gases over on this side compared to what was over on this side. Now this is pretty cool you got a trap door here of course it also has its own gasket to completely seal things off when you're at idle. Next up we have this straight through muffler if you look in between you can actually see out the other side this is actually the mid muffler that came in the Subaru Outback. So after three batteries and four cutoff wheels, I'm kind of giving up on the cordless. And I'm going to have to switch over to my trusty old skill wired grinder. I'm going to keep this one in case i got to file my toenails or something. Trusty old grinder that you guys have always seen on this channel. Now I think this has glass fibers inside. And whatever else it has inside, I just hope it's not toxic for me just grinding at it. Oh, it looks like hair. Ew. Okay, this looks scary and I'm wondering if like a mice or something got in here and created a nest. But this is actually the little glass fibers. Same kind of stuff you'd find in your insulation. It's just all one long piece of fiber that's kind of wrapped up in this sack over here. I never thought you'd find this kind of stuff in your car's exhaust, eh? Now this really looks like a mouse's house. However, this is just a straight through muffler. You see we've got the input pipe over on this side here. And it's also rusting off. And that's going to go to this honeycomb like pipe which goes straight through the muff out to the back side here. Now most of the exhaust gases can actually flow straight through. There's nothing restricting it. There's no baffles or anything in here. However, this entire honeycomb here is surrounded by this glass fiber material. That's why they call it glass pack. And what this does is when some of the sound and exhaust gases escape through here, those pulses are going to be absorbed by this material here because it's really good at vibrating at those frequencies and canceling them out. It's really cool how they've made this like one long piece piece of fiber. Oh my goodness, this looks pretty cool. I don't know if this is cancerous. Let me know in the comments down below if I don't fall ill from this stuff. I don't know how I'm going to dispose of this. Looking over here, you can see this muffler was crumbling. It was rotten. Eventually some of this stuff could probably restrict your exhaust. I'm wondering like if this thing completely rots away. This car had 300,000 kilometers on it, so this is to be expected. And that's a look inside of your car's muffler and how it works. So the next time you start your car, think of all these components and materials that are inside of it, just so you can make it quiet enough so you can get away from your wife on a Saturday night to go hang out with the boys. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.